What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. I already share with you my best books of the year, so I have to share my least favorite books of the year. I'm calling this Books I'm Leaving in 2019 because I would like all of these books out of my sight and I don't want to see them ever again. For this video, I'm going to be taking a strategy from Kathy and I will link her channel down below. She did her best and worst video and I really loved the way she did it. She just went through each month and talked about her best book and her worst book. So for me, I'm going to go down each month and tell you my worst book or my most disappointing book, whatever's in there. I might have read two or more, but I do want to talk about all of these. If you love these books, I'm so happy. If you don't like them, I am also so happy. <laughs> um, I'm not one to just trash books, but there are two books on this list that I absolutely hate and I hate them so much. So let's just get started. Starting off with May is American Born Chinese by Jean Luen Yang. And I thought this was just super racist. And I talked about it with my friend Sarah, who is Chinese, and she also had the same feelings. And I just thought that this was super, super racist. Next is June, and I read a lot of queer books, but I actually didn't read anything that I thought was horrible. But I did give a three star and a three and a half star. So first, the three star was Summer Nights and Summer Days, an anthology by Stephanie Perkins. I guess I would consider this a disappointing read just because I know a lot of people were talking about it when it came out and I've gotten a lot of like good feedback about it and people recommending it to me and so I ended up reading it and I only found a couple of stories that I loved. So I didn't entirely hate this but I am a standalone person so I prefer a standalone over an anthology so I think that I'm just not an anthology person. I ended up giving this anthology a three star because I didn't give a lot of five stars and the majority of stories I felt like were a three to four star read and the last one I ended up DNFing. So this was a disappointing thing for me, but that's okay. I'm glad I got it out of the way and I read it off my shelf and now I don't have to read it again. But I did have some stories that I would reread, but I think I would prefer to listen to the audiobook over having the physical book. Next is a book that I gave three and a half stars and this is US for Perfect by Laura Silverman. This is about a boy named Ariel who is really stressed with school and he's trying to make valedictorian and this just had a lot of academic stress that it stressed me out and the main character kind of pissed me off because he was a jerk and he just was such a jerk to the love interest who was his tutor. At the beginning he was just so mean and I felt like he deserved so much better and so those are some of my critiques but I still recommend this book if you like these kind of things. It has a bisexual male protagonist and a Jewish male protagonist. And the love interest is a person of color. He's Muslim and it does talk about that kind of stuff and I just really enjoyed that aspect but in general it just really stressed me out. All right moving to July. Moving to July where oh boy. <laughs> now buckle in because we're getting to July where I read my two least favorite books and this was for a video that I did where I read the last book that booktubers read and so you can hear all of my thoughts and watch that video. It's one of my favorite ones but I ended up reading The Kingdom by Jess Rothenberg which I had an arc of and I gave this a two star and I really just gave it a two star because there was a lot of animal abuse that I didn't like and I personally am not a big fantasy person so I didn't really understand it but this was a really beloved fantasy throughout the whole year and so I felt like I just wasn't the person to read it and I just really didn't enjoy it. I just remember reading it and being like why am I still reading this? Please let me put it down and never pick it up again. I hate this so much um, but it really just intrigued me because in the beginning it said that someone was murdered and I was like yes I love murder let's go and then I just really didn't like it. Um, and so you can watch that video to know more of my thoughts, but in general, I just didn't enjoy it. And that is entirely because I'm not a fantasy person. <laughs> Next is another book that I read for this video and I absolutely hated this. This is the worst book ever. That is a cold hard fact that it is the worst book ever. Also, Luna is currently on my lap. Um, she's my cat, if you don't know. And so you might see a tail and you might hear some purring, but that's fine. This is None of the Above by I.W. Gregorio, the worst book ever. This is a very bad book. Um, very bad. <laughs> I can't express that enough. It is a very bad book about a cis woman trying to write an intersex character. She uses so many slurs that she's not supposed to and the character does not learn from it. Specifically, the T word and the H word, which I... Uh, 
this is such a bad representation of transgender and intersex people. It is written by a cis woman, and if you're not that, you should never write a book about that. I.W. Gregorio told us in her author's note that she once, just once, had one intersex patient and was very fascinated by them. So much so that she wrote a whole entire book. Y'all, this actually says this. It says, I've always wondered what became of her and how she came to terms with her diagnosis. Did she have a boyfriend? What happened the first time she tried to have sex? Who did she tell, if anyone, about her condition? You, why is that any of your business? Guess what? It's not. It's not any of your business. Who cares? Uh, okay, I can get on a whole tangent. Watch the video if you haven't, or rewatch it if you want to see another rant of mine. Because this book is so bad. If you ever considered picking up, please don't. There's a book called Golden Boy, and I'll have it up on the screen, and I'll link the Goodreads down below. I've heard that has great intersex representation. Don't read this piece of garbage. Thank you. Moving on. <laughs> I'm also going to be talking about DNFs, and I did a lot of DNFing in July. So my first DNF of the year was Fireworks by Katie Catugno. She's one of my favorite authors, so it was such a disappointment, but I feel like I have a love-hate relationship with her. I haven't read most of her books because I've just DNFed them, um, specifically her book 99 Days. I just could never get into it, and this was the same problem. This was the second time I tried to pick this up, and I just felt like if this is the second time and I just can't get through it, might as well DNF it. And then I didn't even realize that the reading rush was in July, but I DNF two books and I do have a whole daily vlogging experience. And so if you've watched them, you know exactly what book I'm about to bring up and I'm going to get angry again. <laughs> Speaking of very bad representation, When the Moon Was Ours by Anna Marie McLemore. This book still haunts me and the whole line in the beginning of this book I still remember a lot. I usually am not triggered by books because I'm just chill. I don't care about most things. And so when I read this book, I was like, okay, I've heard good things about this. I've heard good representation, but why is nobody talking about how fucking transphobic this book is? It is so transphobic, so horrible, so horrible. I hate this book so much that I like am gripping it so tightly because I hate it so much. You just shouldn't talk about a trans character and talk about their bodily functions, I guess, like their parts. Um, and I don't like that, especially don't like having to really put into perspective that they are, that they were born female. And so that's all I can say like without really like talking about it because I don't want to talk about that at all ever again. So definitely go and watch my video if you want to know more about it, but please don't pick this up or I will be very mad at you. And then if you also saw my Reading Rush vlogs, I ended up DNFing Comics Will Break Your Heart by Faith Erin Hicks, which I was so upset about. Um, maybe I'll go back to it one day. I don't know. I just thought it was boring and there was really nothing going on. And I think I read like a good chunk of it, maybe like 50 to 100 pages and like nothing was happening that really made me want to keep reading. And then last, in July, I read Birthday by Meredith Russo, and this was also for my reading the last book that booktubers read video, and this book I just felt very weird about. I gave this book a three star, but I really hated it because it had a lot of internalized transphobia, and to me, if someone is reading that, I didn't feel like they would understand that it's internalized transphobia because they were calling themselves having a disease and like basically all around saying that being trans is bad and I just really hated that so much because if people are picking this up and they don't know much about it and they're picking it up for education I feel like they wouldn't be educated so yeah <laughs> that's all of my logic on that book and moving on to the rest. Next, in August, I read Hold Still by Nina LaCour, and I listened to this on audio, and I read this for Rita Rama, and I just didn't feel anything from it. I listened to it, and I just was confused, and I was just like, mm. like, I don't know, like, I just felt very indifferent and meh about it. 
Another three star I gave in September and this was Love at First Sight by Josh Sundquist and my sister actually picked my TBR and she picked this book. So sorry Jamie but I really didn't like this because first off it is not, I mean okay first it is about a blind protagonist. Our main character is blind and he gets a surgery where he gets his eyesight back it was interesting because I liked reading the process of someone getting their eyesight for the first time and this was so interesting and just all of the struggles that he went through were really interesting but the way they were written was bad. <laughs> like, I don't know, I just hate when there's people that write books because they're fascinated about or they fetish, like are fetishizing something. I just hate that. Like so then they write it and it feels fetishized and fantasized and that is just so weird to me like it's just weird to me so basically he gets his eyesight back and then oh tada he like can he knows colors and shit in like two days and he goes to like i don't know like i feel like it just felt very unrealistic and yeah it just like made me feel really awful um just reading the author's note and reading that he was fascinated by blind people and felt like he could write their story, just that alone just made me be like, what? Next in October, I ended up reading The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware. Gave it a three star because I just wasn't into it. Like, it was like a mystery and I felt like the main character cared more about the mystery than I did. So. This was my first, my like technically my second attempt at Ruth Ware because I tried to read this book previously and I just wasn't into it and I listened to the audiobook and then another book that I DNF'd in October was The Turn of the Key and this was like everyone's favorite book. I'm just very disappointed that I didn't like this because I've heard so many good things about it and I love me a good thriller but I was just bored and if you can't get me into the book then I am just not going to read it. That also goes for A Stranger in the House by Sherry Lapano, which I was so disappointed by because she is one of my favorite thriller authors and this was just so disappointing. Um, there was just a lot of things that I could predict and I didn't like that because when I read her book The Couple Next Door I couldn't predict anything and this just felt like a sophomore slump. It was her second book. It was definitely a sophomore slump. Next is a graphic novel that I was super disappointed by and this is Pumpkin Heads by Faith Erin Hicks and Rainbow Rowell. I have a video talking about is this worth the hype and it's basically a spoiler free review. So it will be up here if you would like to go and watch it but I was just super disappointed by it. The illustrations were awesome but in general the story just felt so mediocre and I was just super disappointed by it. Next is December and I ended up reading this graphic novel. I'm kind, of, I'm kind of calling it that because it's a book with pictures and I am going to be talking about this more in my graphic novel wrap-up, um, like my end of the year wrap-up because I'm going to be doing quarterly wrap-ups. But this I gave a three star just because it was supposed to be about queer heroes like historical figures and icons but it was just more LGBT. <laughs> they just could have done such a better job with this especially because they put in like very relevant people that are relevant right now um and I just felt like they could have added more representation than just LGBT and I was like this is supposed to be queer heroes but we only have LGBT so just call it LGBT heroes that's what it should be called and last I actually have a whole video coming with this but this is again but better by Christine Ruscio which I gave two stars and I'm just not going to talk about it because I have a whole video coming of me talking about it. So definitely wait for that. It'll probably be after this one. Um, yikes. <laughs> this was so bad. That's all I got to say. I hated this and I'm, I hate that I hated it because I wanted to like it. I just, it was bad. That's all I gotta say. And it's not anything towards Christine. I just thought it was bad. That's all. So those were the worst books of 2019 and just the books that I DNF'd and the books that I really hated and was disappointed by. Let me know what your least favorite book of the year was, if you've read any of these, what you thought of them, and um, don't read When the Moon Was Ours because it is trash. Um, thank you. So that is it for my end of the year videos. I'm finally finished. Yes, 
I'm so happy about that. If you've missed any of them, definitely go over to my channel and watch the rest of them. I have my best books of the year, I have my reading stats, and my January TBR, and I think that's it. Maybe I missed one, but that is it. Thank you all for watching this video. If you're new here, definitely go and hit subscribe and turn on my post notifications so you don't miss a video. I also have a Patreon if you'd like to support me there. I hope you're all having a great day, and I'll see you next time.